Hello everybody, welcome back to a new video. Welcome to the Nürburgring on ACC. Not actually at the Nürburgring, but virtually. And in this video, we're gonna look at a little battle that commenced a couple of weeks back between me and a certain Mr. Jaroslav Honzik, or Jardier, as he may be known in better terms. But effectively, this was the six hours of Nürburgring SRO endurance series. So in terms of endurance racing on this game, the pinnacle, we're both in a McLaren. We're both running a wet setup because it rained at the start of the race and everyone chose wet setups. And uh, I'm currently in third, Jardier's in second. The lead is kind of 25, 30 seconds down the road, so there's no point even talking about him. But it's a very fair fight, this fight, because we're both in the same boat, both on the same age of tyre, both on the same fuel, both on the same setup, both in the same car. So it's all about the driver and uh, kind of who who can finish ahead at the end of the stint. So there's, uh, I think, 15 laps to go. Yep, the title of the video is I Race Jardier for 15 laps, so that would make sense. And uh, we, at this stage, with 15 laps to go, we're a couple of seconds behind him, chasing him down, pushing him very hard, and we're skipping now to lap 169, and we've gained, you know, a second and a half. We're right behind him now. and. It's easier said than done to get past someone on this circuit when you're in the same car with the same setup because your strengths and weaknesses are exactly the same areas of the track. With a different car, you know, if they're struggling in under brakes but they're better on the straights or whatever, you, c you can do something. But when it's the same car, it's tricky. Um, so all I can do is put pressure on every corner of every lap, which after six hours of endurance racing is quite tiring, but it is what it is and just hope he makes a mistake. That's, all, that's literally all, all I can do. I can't, well, I say you can't send it. You'll see later on we do. And we're, we're gonna look at Jardier's stream here. You can see he's a man concentrating under pressure, but he can deal with it. He's got a thousand plus Maximum viewers watching him. Focus. He's done this before. Maximum it's not his first guys. rodeo. He knows I exactly what he's course. doing. And uh, I need to try and make him feel uncomfortable. I suppose that's all I can do. The weird bit with this, battle or video or race is that I was driving for Rocket Simsport in this particular race and uh, so the team last year I drove in British GT they were Rocket Motorsport this is their sim team or their esports team Jardier is driving for Yassi which is a Veloce ran team who is obviously who I usually drive for on a week to week basis so I really didn't want to yeah shunt because it would be a double edged sword not only would I take myself out of the race I'd take Jardier out, who is effectively a teammate. So it's the highlight of my race, guys. Little guy from Czech Republic, little YouTuber. I don't know how he does it. I don't know how he can talk. World's fastest gamer. With <laughs> while doing this, if you, I didn't stream this race, but um, I, I was I was fully concentrating. I, I couldn't talk. The last time I actually had to fight with James Baldwin was like four years ago in the Pursuit Cars 2 ESL. No, SMSR World Championship. Yeah, me and Jolly have been racing for years. Project Cars two days, the good old days, as they may say. But um, effectively, yeah, you'll see on my streams if you do watch them on Twitch. I, I rarely talk when I race. I, I just can't do it. Every time I talk, mistakes. Which, um, yeah, I, I've tried to, and obviously it'd be great for the content if you could talk You could talk while doing it, like Jolly A or Jimmy Broadbent, for example, but I just can't do it. It's not in my skill set. So going into turn one, lap 175. So a good 11 laps to go. Right on the back of him in turn one. Uh, he's very consistent, is Jardia. I mean, he was a little bit slower in this stint. You know, we caught up a good few seconds over the course of the stint to get behind him. And I have no doubt if I got past, I would have drove away. But at the same time, he was so consistent. He knew where to place the car, where to be slow, where to put the power down, so I could not have any opportunity of getting past without being a little bit dirty. And uh, you can see there we're cutting to Johnny's stream again. Guys, I don't know if I can hold him longer. You can, you can you're fine. Keep going. So at this point, we've, we've been behind him for about 12 minutes. The left run is really suffering now. He's starting to feel that fatigue, here. the pressure. Murphy, um, giving him a bit of a pep talk and he's right you know if he doesn't make any mistakes and he's driving the way he is right now for eight minutes it's in the bag like there's nothing I can do you can see here we're visibly quicker but we're both on eight wing 
full downforce because of the wet setup. There's just nothing you can do. And uh, I don't really. I did get frustrated. You'll see throughout the stint, I got more and more frustrated, um, which results in a, a few moves that are up for debate. That's definitely uh, fair to say. But we'll get to that in a minute. So we've got a good toe going into the chicane, which in this car, by the way, on this track, the chicane is an absolute nightmare. Like that curb on the inside on the right, it's random as, as to whether the car hits that curb or not. We're showing our nose into the final corner, just hoping he makes a mistake. He doesn't. TC0 on the exit, so I'm really pushing. Even though the tyres are worn, I'm still going for the TC0 trick to get a bit more grunt. Going into turn one, Jardia goes a little bit deep, but still not enough for us to really do anything. We can do a bit, we can attempt to switch back going into turn three, but yeah, or turn two even, but it was never going to work. It's sort of, it's quite, it's quite easy to defend on this track in a GT car, you know, it's, as long as you get good exits from the slow corners and stuff like that, you should be alright. So, cut it again to lap 177, going into turn one. The best opportunity, by the way, to overtake Giardio was into turn one. And we're going to jink to the inside last minute, break very late, way too late, avoiding contact, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was worth a go just to kind of do something a bit different. At this stage, I've been following them for about 11 laps, didn't make any any moves. That was the first. I just wanted to see how it go. Way too deep on the brakes, though. A good 20 metres too late. And going into to turn one again, a little bit of a replay, just to see what Giardio's reaction was. Clear on the right. <laughs> I don't think he could quite believe he said He couldn't believe I said that. It was a bit of a send. I, I would be a bit concerned if someone did that to me, but I had to do it. I had to do it. He's just laughing. Right, a few laps later. Same corner. And uh, same situation. We're about the same amount of time behind him. I'm just going to break a little bit earlier and go for the send. Going into turn one. Looks like we're just about going to make it, but the the angle of the corner is so acute, he gets a better exit, and once again, just about holds on. It's closer than the first lunge, but still. I don't think we broke too late. I just think the angle just wasn't in our favour, and we, yeah. The thing is, if you don't break late enough, you don't actually make this end, because you're not alongside going into the corner. But if you break that, you know, one or two metres too late, that happens, and then, yeah. You don't, you don't get the position. <laughs> He's just laughing again. Why? <laughs> Why? So that those two sends are in the space of two or three laps. Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> I Why? think they're not happy because obviously I drive for them usually and it's a bit of a risky strategy sending it like that. Going into the last lap then, turn one again. I don't break late at all. I'm just showing my nose. He goes wide. We go side by side through turn one. Going into turn two, I'm just being super aggressive at this stage. I really want the P2 after a six hour race, you know. Um, but he defends well into turn two. Into turn three, he's got the position. At this stage, it's desperation. I mean, I've just got to be as close as possible behind him at every corner and hope he, he buckles because there's nothing else I can do. Um, so I'm just going to try and follow him as close as possible to basically deliver a qualifying lap with a car in front of you because that gives you the opportunity to pounce if he, if he misses an apex, if he breaks a bit too late. Any of those mistakes, I'm on him. Going into, you see that I'm jinking at the last minute, expecting something to happen, but yeah, I mean, he's, uh, as I said earlier, it's not his first rodeo, he's not going to fall for any of that ridiculous nonsense. Going into the Schumacher S, we were a lot better this particular lap through there. We've got a good run. I, I recognised earlier in the stint, he breaks early into this left. So I'm going to send it last minute. Bit of a jink, bit of a dummy. We just about keep it within the white lines. We've got the line for the next right-hander. We've got the move done. And at this stage, my, my heart was going. Like, last lap, I've been behind him for 20 minutes. I finally got the move done. He's right on me. He's basically bump drafted me down the straight. I completely forgot to look for my braking marker. Brake way too late. Go off, come back on, and uh, 
contact, spin round, in the grass, and uh, yeah. Yeah. And that was that. So, replays. Um, yeah, you can see there, I'm just too busy looking in my mirrors. I break at about 60 meters, you need to break at about 75, 80. And uh, I do go off the track. The car's fully in control. When I come back on, I think Jardier maybe just slightly misjudged my speed when I came back on and uh, we made contact. Initially, after the race, I thought 100%, 100% that was my fault. Having looked at it again and again and again, I think it was a bit 75-25 because it was still my fault, majority, because I made the initial mistake. I braked too late. I went off. But I do. there's a part of me that does think, could he have avoided this? Probably. I mean, probably. But ultimately, if I didn't break, I'd break myself. And, you know, he didn't break that late. I could have break the, where I usually break and I've made the corner. I would have got P2, he would have got P3, it would have been a fair race, and everyone would have been happy. I Instead, I outbreak myself, guys. went off, we crashed, uh, I mean, I and uh, you can see there Jardy on his stream pretty oh. pissed, because it, he, he likes fair racing, and uh, contact's never good. So, yeah, I mean, in the end, the stewards deemed it Jardy his fault, <laughs> and they dropped back to fourth. We regained third from their penalty. P4 was only right behind us, about six seconds behind us. And we, uh, oh, they finished second. So, um, yeah, not the best result. But until that point, an absolutely insane few laps. 15 laps with Jardier racing hard. A few sends, lots of defensive moves, a lot of pressure, which I thought, you know, I thought he dealt really well. Given he was a bit off the pace, to, to not buckle under that pressure, like, fair play. And uh, I'm sure his, his viewers watching his stream love that as well. But um, yeah, that's the video. I mean, you know, thank you to Jardier obviously for the race itself, but for letting me make this video, I think it's quite a fascinating um, insight. Let me know what you thought in the comments of the incident itself. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up, of course, sub to the channel, blah, 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 blah. But yeah, until the next video, take care and I'll see you soon.